I am Dr. Neema Bisht, BDS by degree and a pharma professional. Also, I am founder of Career in Pharma, wherein I provide guidance and training to healthcare professionals. I am on a mission to help 1 lakh healthcare professionals to attain financial security through career into clinical research industry. Hello everyone. Once again, I welcome you all to Career in Pharma. So today we have a special guest with us and it's really an honor to have Dr. Shiva with us today. So Dr. Shiva is into pharmacovigilance domain for more than 10 years now. And uh, he, he worked for many CROs and many pharmaceutical companies. So his domain is pharmacovigilance and specifically, you know, he talks a lot about uh, PV automation and all those stuff uh, that we will try to understand through the conversation, which we are going to have with Dr. Shiva today. And definitely it's a very short introduction. So Dr. Shiva will tell you about brief, you know, about introduction, everything. So with this, uh, welcome Dr. Shiva. And really it's an honor to have with you us today. Uh, Dr. Shiva, hi, welcome. I welcome to career in pharma. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Neema, for uh, such a lovely introduction. And, uh, uh, you know, good luck to your uh, channel as well, which uh, you're focusing on farm coincidence and its practices. So it's, I think it's a good uh, platform for all the freshers as well as, you know, somebody who is uh, willing to uh, pursue in this uh, as a career option uh, in this field. Right. Uh, so as you correctly said, yes, I worked in different uh, pharmaceutical companies, completed mm -hmm. decade uh, in uh, pharmacovigilance, uh, worked throughout the entire spectrum of uh, pharmacovigilance as such. And mm -hmm. uh, my key interest, uh, although have been in automation, uh, you know, developing the lean methodologies mm -hmm. and lean processes in the uh, mm -hmm. process of uh, this entire uh, spectrum of activities. Mm -hmm. Along with that, uh, you know, I had, uh, you know, also chance uh, working with uh, different technology companies uh, to implement automation and different pharmaceutical companies oh, you know, great. Right from the uh, scratch. Right. I think that is a good uh, exposure as uh, well for me. Mm -hmm. And I also happen to work for uh, PVPI, uh, you know, program of India, pharmaceutical mm -hmm. program of India as a signal uh, evaluator for some time, uh, uh, you know, as a voluntary mm -hmm. uh, activity. Yeah. Great, great to hear this that, uh, you know, you are doing your uh, medical stuff with technology inside that. Uh, really a great combination, actually. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Shiva, I just wanted to know, like, uh, why after M MBBS you decided to come to pharmacovigilance? Like, it was a serendipity or, uh, you know, a conscious decision what it was like after MBBS coming to pharmacovigilance? Yeah, definitely. So, after uh, medical profession, I, I, I think uh, past decade uh, before uh, right from wherever we are speaking right now uh, mm -hmm. before 10 years 12 years uh, back then there were very a few opportunities for a medical uh, professional right after you complete your uh, medicine there are mm -hmm. uh, there is only one option that you look into which is you know uh, you know pursuing your post graduation and then getting into the clinical stuff but then i really wanted to see what impact i can bring in a larger portion of the patients because if today i practice as general practitioner or any specialization mm -hmm. right i can only in my own capacity i would be able to only treat uh, maybe 50 patients per day uh, you know if you take a scenario in India, mm -hmm. at least in a rural uh, rural side, right? Uh, 50 patients is a good number. But at the same time, uh, there are uh, more other things uh, that you, uh, you know, restrict yourself to. But in uh, the reason I really wanted to explore uh, the clinical research or pharmacovigilance especially is because uh, the impact of the patients that you, uh, you know, that you tend to work on uh, mm -hmm. has a very greater, uh, you know, impact, right? I mean, you can no, yes. you don't treat the patient directly, but then indirectly you help them, you know, taking wise decisions on medications, uh, take, uh, you know, certain uh, different steps that the safety of the patients is not hampered, right? So that is what is the great, you know, the motto behind, you know, mm -hmm. entering into pharmacovigilance. Yes, yes. So, doctor, with this, I just wanted to know, like, you were aware uh, in your MBBS itself or, you know, after finishing, you got to know about the field? 
no i i think see uh, even during the, the medicine we, mm-hmm. uh, of course uh, in our textbooks there is a very small portion of clinical trials on farm foods mm-hmm. but then it is not elaborated and then uh, nobody knew that it is uh, you know there is a career option that is uh, available in the market for farm foods right mm-hmm. so i think uh, even now even today there is a uh, very less emphasis that has been provided in our uh, indian uh, education especially for the history, uh, you know the uh, bi- biology uh, mm. zoology uh, you know the science background students right so i really feel that a greater uh, emphasis is provided to pharmacists uh, medicine mm. pro- professionals the md pharmacologists all these on pharmacovigilance i think it is it is very very important and mm. uh, we need to uh, really make sure that this education is so imparted uh, elsewhere in the hospitals uh, the to the nurses and exactly. uh, everyone that is when we can uh, you know get more information uh, receive more uh, voluntary uh, reports mm. for uh, uh, you know the side effects and that is how we can develop uh, patient safety uh, in india mm, yes yes exactly doctor very important actually it is Uh, so with this doctor i just wanted to know at a very fresher level when you just started after mbbs so how it was like it was easy for you or what all things you know took you to come inside pharmacovigilance no i think one challenging thing is uh, because as I, as i have told you i didn't know what uh, pharmacovigilance was of course mm-hmm. definitely i had to uh, you know because uh, that point of time google was the only uh, source where mm. you can uh, you know get more information so that is where i have uh, done my uh, research to see what farm coexistence is what are the career options here what is the growth that you can find mm. so i always wanted to just see how it is and then go back to the clinicals uh, that i was already doing in hospitals oh. right but uh, when i entered it was uh, you know slightly different i thought there would be mm. uh, you know subjects i had, i had carried my uh, stethoscope the first day i have entered uh, the office right Hmm. so uh, from there when i looked in when i learned the uh, farm about farm co vigilance uh, it was fine i mean uh, for the first year it was fine i was doing my job it was interesting hmm. uh, you know reading into different uh, reports uh, case reports uh, learning new drugs uh, right hmm. which we were not thought in pharmacology right there were many hmm. drugs uh knowing about the drug drug interaction reading the labels nobody yes. uh, I, i we never know that there was something called as label uh, uh-huh. before entering into pharmacovigilance right so these are certain things that uh, i really uh, in it, uh, you know uh, uh, flourish on and then i think it is very important for you to learn uh, at least mm-hmm. anything uh, in everyday practice right even now i think uh, even now i keep on uh, trying to see where and i can uh, you know upskill myself with certain other knowledge forms right mm. i think the first year has been very easy the second year it has been uh, till now it has been learning and an imparting knowledge to others great great yeah exactly doctor so guys you have to be a lifelong learner and uh, definitely inside pharmaceutical industry that is you know fits very well it you have to be lifelong learner and uh, like for every in every walk of life yes so doctor just uh, one question like which, which is little out of scope is uh, how you convince your parents because being from a medical background and you know totally doing patients and all those stuff and then convincing your parents that i am going for some non clinical stuff like uh, how it was because because many face challenge you know they have challenge in convincing their parents parents are not ready all those things also happens yeah i agree i i, I think see uh, right as i've uh, told you before uh, you need to make sure that first you are convinced hmm. right uh, uh, exactly knowing what you're doing and then what impact can it have on a patient's right or on mm-hmm. an overall uh, or actually Mm. so that is when you can explain to somebody else uh, your neighbors because um, most of them are right now even after the decade of years of experience in farm coexistence they might not really articulate well with their mm. neighbors they might not be able to explain what are they doing and when how will it impact the patients right so i think there, exactly. there is uh, there, there's a lot of gap in understanding and then making others understand what is that uh, uh, work that you do because mm. uh, farm coexistence is a great science and then uh, all farm coexistence professionals are creating uh, you know doing great jobs uh, at their mm. own capacity uh, helping in patient safety which has a very greater impact 
right uh, hmm. now you might not feel it but then at the end uh, right when you uh, maybe you're working on only one function but then that function is the you know downstream activity or an upstream activity for certain other functions which are uh, you know uh, critical decision steps right yes, so yes. if you look into that as a whole there is a lot that you're contributing to exactly exactly so for all for all doctors who are not able to convince their parents but first get clarity on yourself then definitely you can very easily convince your parents also so with this doctor what are what about the opportunities for abroad and uh, if opportunities are good uh, what what are the ways actually for any abroad okay so there are uh, the larger markets are uh, europe Uh, if you speak about the pharma setup, Europe and uh, US, right? Mm-hmm. Th- these are the larger markets. And then, uh, if you come to the servicing uh, outsourcing companies, that's India. Uh, that that is what uh, we all know, hmm. right? If you have to go and work in the US, it is very difficult without an H one B, you know, or a hmm. sponsor. And then it is difficult for you to receive any sponsors. Right. Mm. Similarly, if you go to Europe, there are uh, very less chances that you get uh, sponsors. Uh, you know, to sponsor your visa, working visa, in mm. the UK or uh, in the other regions of uh, you know Europe. And certain countries have language restrictions as well. For example, if you take Italy or Spain or German, Germany, right? You have language restrictions wherein they prefer to have uh, you know people already uh, you know uh, well versed with those languages. Hmm. Similar with the uh, Middle East countries as well. There are a lot of uh, small pharma companies are there, and then there are many Indians who have moved. uh there but then they can all speak arabic right so hmm. language restriction is definitely one and then there are countries like ireland uh, uk and all wherein uh, there are a lot of uh, you know known folks who have uh, traveled there for uh, you know one year of internship or education and then hmm. through there uh, they have uh, picked up uh, pv jobs but okay. uh, I, i i feel you don't have to travel to abroad to really work on this you have ample you know pharma companies are right now mm. setting up their uh, coes uh, within india itself for this function i think there are a lot of ample opportunities within india that you can venture out great 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 so guys in india itself many opportunities are there and definitely future is going to be more brighter so you can get opportunity inside india also uh, so with this structure uh, can you provide few steps like how anyone who is mbbs they can just start into pharmacovigilance what steps they should take yeah definitely see i think uh, first of all uh, make sure that you are uh, you have done your uh, research on what this field is mm. and then uh, make sure you that you stick to this field uh, i see many uh, you know uh, physicians who do not know about this initially mm. they just uh, wanted to earn some uh, you know money for their uh, coachings uh, mm. and preparation for their uh, post graduation so they get again they work for 6 4 4 6 months and then they just go back to the clinical stuff that they have to they are willing to do mm. but uh, if, you, if you wanted to do you can go and do in the clinical side right? you can go and work in the hospitals at least you can uh, you know gain some knowledge uh, and apply it in your pg right but then if you are uh, really willing to uh, enter into pharmaco with lens i think firstly research about pharmaco with lens if possible do some online free courses about pharmaco with lens there are a couple of other uh you know six months course three months courses on mm. pharmacovigilance which you can uh, really look into i think the more uh, you uh, you know uh, 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 you know gain this knowledge about uh, pharmacovigilance at least uh, at an early stage mm. the less training is required and then uh, you know uh, every uh, company would willing to uh, take pressures who already have some bit of information right uh, that's exactly. the uh, so guys first step is get clarity actually what the field is about and then you decide if you have to come or not otherwise continue doing what you are enjoying your clinical practice yes uh, so with this doctor uh, i mean is there any specific skill set required for you know these kind of jobs pharmacovigilance there is no such uh, specific skill set but then i really would uh, recommend all the uh, it is a physician and doctors to first at least work one two years in the hospitals or in mm-hmm. other uh, you know clinical setups because uh, that is very very important because you have worked uh, as uh, you have done your education and then make sure you contribute to the healthcare uh, you know uh, at least from a clinical uh, practice setup at least two mm-hmm. years 
so that you get some uh, you know gain some experience that you can uh, definitely will be helpful in our farm consultants as well Mm. Uh, apart from that there is no special skill set that is uh, required for a physician to and a physician to enter into the farm coaching so mm great great so guys with this like your degree is more than enough to get into pv and along with this as uh, dr shiva mentioned like two years of experience you can have clinical experience which will help you inside pharmacovigilance so doctor with this what is your message for fellow aspirants just like you who are looking for you know pharmaceutical industry after uh, mbbs because nowadays you know i interact with many medicos also on a regular basis and i got to know that many are not interested also in site clinical practice so and they want to move to pharmaceutical industry so what is your uh, you know message for those kind of aspirants no i see uh, hmm. i think whatever you uh, you are willing to do uh, you know whatever your student whatever your heart is in make sure that you, you give your complete uh, hmm. self to that uh, particular work that is very important that is uh, what will uh, you know take you a long way in this any career that you speak about yes. right if and uh, for uh, freshers uh, try this i think it's an in it's an interesting field Uh, I think there is uh, not. It is not only ICS or ICS or itself is not pharmacovigilance. So sometimes you feel it is a data entry job, but that is mm. not. There is a lot to learn. Uh, there is a. It's a very big science, mm. and there is a lot uh, of years that goes into uh, you know doing all this, uh, gaining knowledge, and then expert uh, getting expert experience in these uh, stuff, right? And for uh, people who are already into this, who have already uh, you know successfully completed few years. try to upskill yourself uh, in signal risk management mm. uh, different other benefit risk uh, different other uh, functions within the pharmacovigilance field so that uh, you know it is easy for you to step up the ladder uh, within your organization or the other uh, places that is when you will mm. get uh, and, and, and it gets more interesting when you learn more exactly exactly yeah very uh, good thing you said actually many things actually it's a data entry so no it's more than that actually see definitely everything is data data is very important doesn't mean that you have to do data entry lot many things are there especially for mbbs as a medical reviewer they have to do many things and like dr shiva already mentioned many things are there and it's like a very vast science so always upskill yourself that's how you know growth happens so uh, with this doctor what is your biggest learn learning from industry and any regret if you have after coming to industry no i think uh, learning as i told you every day you every have day. Uh, new challenges uh, mm. you know new things that come up new regulations uh, be it the fda or the ema or uh, india right so there are different regulations or guidelines that keep on coming to make sure that mm. you update yourself and then uh, there are uh, different forms right uh, forums that you can participate in different webinars different mm. uh, you know conferences that you can participate and then uh, try to learn right create a community wherein uh, you know there are hmm. some people uh, people try to speak to each other and then gain uh, gain more knowledge i think that is what is important and that is what i have been doing all hmm. uh, years and uh, doctor any regret no i think uh, there is no regret definitely uh, hmm. you know white uh, 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 you know wearing the white coat and the scope on hmm. the shoulder would definitely add value but then definitely i i, I think the and uh, uh, you know end result or the end outcome of the output mm. that you look into is uh, patient right and that is what here uh, you do as well so yes. if you it, it's just the mindset that you need to uh, set in to see uh, what is the bigger picture that you work Mm-hmm. yes yes uh, so uh, another question is doctor have you ever missed you know uh, your clinic although it's uh, now it's a very long period actually but you know in initial phase of your uh, job into pharmacovigilance have you ever missed you know treating patient clinical practice have you ever missed in in initial phases yeah definitely see uh, mm-hmm. I, i think definitely everybody would uh, feel so but mm-hmm. at the same time uh, whenever you read a report you feel that a patient is talking to you right i if mm-hmm. you have that mindset it's all in the mindset right i mean if you see that you're working with a real patient uh, you know not uh, virtual i think uh, that is where uh, things will fall in right uh, that is where it makes a difference mm-hmm. you should uh, just do what you love and then uh, love what you do yes yes exactly and mindset is very important in all these things 
so with this doctor uh, last question is considering you have already worked in pharmaco vigilance for more than 10 years now so how do you think that pharmaco vigilance job market has evolved in india in the last decade and what is your take on pv automation little bit on automation uh, our viewers want to know yeah definitely i think see uh, with the uh, last decade uh, it has increased a lot and then uh, the uh, recent report is it is going to increase at least by uh, 17% CAGR by 2026 which means the outsourcing of uh, mm -hmm. farm vigilance will certainly uh, increase and then there are a lot of influx of uh, you know farm pharmaceutical companies setting up their uh, farm vigilance uh, practice within india and mm -hmm. i think uh, within the last 2 3 years we have seen a couple of them right the bigger mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. so i think the future uh, there is a lot of scope in this uh, area, a lot of outsourcing uh, work that uh, will be uh, definitely be there. And at the same time, uh, there is also, uh, you, you need to constantly update yourself, upskill yourself with, uh, you know, the new things, new guidelines that are there, update yourself, uh, right? Uh, if you're into one particular area, make sure that you also learn the other, uh, you know, functions of uh, pharmacovigilance and then try, try to uh, move into that, learn them. Uh, right. Uh, but coming to mm -hmm. automation, definitely automation will play a very, very major role. And we have already been seeing, uh, you know, I've been a speaker in different conferences, uh, speaking on automation, uh, have uh, participated in a few forums as well mm -hmm. as uh, panels, right? So automation is uh, really, uh, you know, it's happening. It's it's not that uh, we are not seeing the future. It's already happening. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Many companies have already you know, uh, implemented automation tools. And mm. then, uh, but at the same time, what I uh, really uh, would tell, uh, you know, all, uh, you know, aspirants is uh, don't uh, be afraid that automation would take away your jobs. No, uh, automation would never uh, take away your jobs. It will only be a, a you know, man in a loop or a human in a loop uh, kind of a system. Uh, wherein uh, human intervention is very, very required and it is important. So mm. uh, the system would do it, but then you need uh, somebody else to feed the system, somebody else to treat, uh, train the system on, and then uh, somebody to give a feedback, uh, you know, continuous feedback to the system. So mm. uh, definitely a human is uh, required. But what skill set would be required in the future is an uh, amalgam of both the technical, which is a clinical aspect or the operational aspect, and mm. then the technology side. So make sure you update at least to the uh, few of the internal, these few things about technology, how it works, the back end, how can, how can you apply automation, uh, be it the process automation or the technological automation. Mm -hmm. So you need to, uh, you know, learn the, those things. Great, great piece of advice, doctor. Like uh, you have to always update, upskill yourself. Uh, and uh, automation doesn't mean that, you know, job will be less or no more people will be required. Like doctor already mentioned that behind automation also humans are required. Human intervention will always be required. So, uh, so with this doctor, we are going to conclude this interview and really a uh, great piece of advice you gave today. Uh, so guys, be a lifelong learner and always update, upskill yourself. And being an MBBS, if you, you want to come inside this industry, Make sure first, make your mind clear that why you want to come. And if you want to come, then do your own R&D before coming so that, you know, things will be easy for you. Uh, so uh, with this, I'm going to conclude this uh, interview. And once again, thank you, uh, Dr. Shiva, for coming here and sharing the valuable insights. And really, thanks a lot to you from bottom of my heart, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nima. Have a good, uh, good day and then good luck to your channel as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, guys, uh, I hope that uh, you like this interview and uh, please comment in the comment section about what idea you have behind the pharmacovigilance and, you know, what you learned from this interview specifically. Please type your comment and I would love to read all those. And if you want me to come up with some other topic related to clinical research or inside pharmacovigilance also, please comment that also. I would love to make video on that as well. And if you like this video, is this interview, and if you learn anything from this uh, video specifically, then please comment that also. And if you like this, then please like this video and also please subscribe to our channel. I will be coming soon uh, with some next interview and video, uh, whatever, you know, is in demand. And uh, till, that, till then, please stay safe, healthy, aware and updated. Thank you. Thank you all for 
listening to this interview. Thank you.